All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Gauck, and thanks for joining us today. I'm going to be talking about getting started with Python in everyday geophysics. So, what we're going to talk about today, um, I'm going to get into a little bit of who I am, um, talk about why Python in general, why Python for geoscience specifically, how you can get started, and I'm going to share some resources that I've used, and I'm also going to show some examples of a couple things, a couple small things that I've built using Python. So who am I? Um, like I said, my name is Marco Gauck. I just want to start out one of the main things. I'm not a developer. That's not my background. I graduated from geophysics. Shortly after that, I came here to work at Sizeware as a technical sports specialist for about seven years. Um, I did a little bit of programming in school, but it's pretty limited. I even almost failed one of my comp sci classes after getting 10% on a lab final. I was able to get started using Python because I think it's a relatively easy coding language to start with and use it to do some neat things. Uh, I built some programs to speed up some of the workflows for some of our clients, which ended up saving them a decent amount of time and I guess money too, if you look at it that way. Uh, I also walked through a course with uh, a bunch of the non-development staff at Sizeware here. We're a software company, but we've got quite a few people that also aren't developers and they were interested in learning Python. So I walked through a course with them. And yeah, so in terms of geoscience, a lot of my exposure has been on the interpretation side, but that doesn't mean what I say won't be apl applicable to processing or any other aspect of geoscience as well. Um, just another thing, I've also hosted a hackathon for Sizeware here, and I'll talk a little bit more about what a hackathon is when I get into this. So why did I decide to learn Python? Uh, like I said, in school, I did a little bit of programming. I was always very interested in programming, programming, but I was never very good at it. And I decided to start learning it just to help scale a couple different tasks I had. Instead of diving into really complicated machine learning algorithms, uh, it seemed, for myself at least, to learn how to manage my data, it seemed like a much easier and better way to start. Um, our software also includes a software development kit, might not mean much, but basically allows you to use Python with our software. So it ended up becoming relevant for me and support to help out some of our clients. Turns out, if you can write your own little scripts, or little programs, you can end up expanding on what your commercial software might not do yet. Might not be able to make a beautiful GUI or beautiful window from scratch, um, but you might end up be able to automate some of the processes that you're doing that are pains in the butt to repeat every day or every week. Um, and that's the sort of thing that learning how to code yourself, especially at the start, can be really good with. So couple things about Python. Um, it's open source, so it's totally free. You can download Python, start using it right away. Um, but it's also very well supported. There's a large community that's it's quite popular. And so not, not only is it well supported just in general, in terms of the number of scientists or any developers, web developers, or anyone using it out there, but the geoscience community um, relative to Python is also growing quite a bit. And I'll share some links um, that relate to the geoscience software community a little bit later. Um, and just on the right side of the screen there, I've got a little graph just showing on one of the major programming blogs, Stack Overflow, what percentage of questions have been revolving around Python as time's gone by. So Python has been growing in popularity lately and probably why you've heard of it, maybe why you're attending this webinar right now. Um, so yeah, the community, is huge and a couple other details about it it's at least in my opinion it's highly readable um, once you start getting into coding it it makes a lot of sense and it's also very good for rapid prototyping it's good for building something quickly getting some code that's working to start going without having to worry about compiling it and a couple other things a couple other details that you have to worry about with some other languages so why python for geoscience um, Python's probably not gonna replace everything your commercial software package can do, especially when you're getting started. You can build some plots with something called matplotlib in Python, or you can do some data science and math with something called pandas. Um, 
if you're just getting started, it's also a good idea to use it to just extend your current capabilities, not replace them. Um, a couple of modern geoscience software packages also offer some level of Python support. So also as a shameless plug, you can connect it to Sizeware. You can use it to push and pull your data from a given software package. And maybe you have your seismic loaded into your software, do some interpretation on it, build some grids. Now you want to do some analysis. And maybe you read about something in a paper recently that doesn't exist in your commercial software. You could try writing some code and try and implement whatever you read about. Um, maybe you don't love the way your maps look. You could also use some code to get that data out and try building something yourself. So what I've got on the screen here is just a couple of examples of the large scientific libraries that have to do with Python. And I say libraries, but basically they're just kind of add-ons. They're all free, by the way. Just things you can, once you have Python, you can download these other libraries and use them in Python. Um, a lot of the time when you're doing geoscientific stuff, especially seismic data, uh, you want to deal with large multi-dimensional arrays. That's what NumPy is really good for. Pandas is a data structure and analysis library. Uh, handles things kind of like Microsoft Excel, but in code. Um, Matplotlib is a great library for building plots and figures. has a lot of stuff already in there implemented to make some pretty pictures. And then in the bottom right corner there is another one called Scikit-Learn. So it's a machine learning library that has a lot of machine, it's being, it's well supported, being expanded upon all the time. And it's a pretty easy way to get into machine learning, especially with code. Uh, it's by no means the only one. There's also TensorFlow is another big one that Google's made, but uh, it's just an, an example of some of the large scientific libraries that are part of Python or that can be added into Python. Um, but there is also geoscience libraries that you can take advantage of. Um, in the chat right now, I'm just gonna post a website um, on a link to a website called GitHub that you might be familiar with. It's a big programming library. It has a bunch of uh, programming examples on it, but uh, more specifically to a page called Software Underground that links to a ton of geoscience libraries that are already built in Python. Like I mentioned before, Python's open source and a big part of the community is open source. So people are putting out all these tools for free. So there's Lasio or LASIO. I'm not sure how it's pronounced exactly, but it's a tool for easily reading your LAS files. Uh, Welly is another tool that allows you to analyze and process your well log data. Segwai.io uh, is another one supported by Equinor, I believe, that is used for opening and reading Segwai files. This is, these are just a few examples. If you go check out that link I posted, there's quite a few more that are just a bunch of Python libraries, mostly Python. There's a couple other languages in there, but um, open source libraries that you can use access to start doing some geoscience work and start programming. Okay, so how did I get started? Um, maybe you're wondering that. Uh, I decided mostly to start simple. So like I said a little bit before, I emailed all the non-development staff in our company, like sales, support, marketing, see who wanted to learn how to do some coding. Um, turns out management was pretty excited about that because that meant people at the company got to learn more technical skills. And I think people were able to get a lot out of it because they were learning how to code. Um, but yeah, starting is definitely the hardest part. A uh, little self plug here, but uh, I also hosted a hackathon. Hackathon is basically a one or two day event where people get together, form some teams, and they actually build some programs over those one or two days. Um, they end up being really motivational and inspiring, even for people who are new to it. Um, Everyone's usually very surprised about how much they can accomplish at a hackathon, just like a one or two day event. Even if they don't know that much about how to code, they're great things to check out, especially if they're geoscience related. Um, they're typically very friendly to newcomers. Uh, there's one in Houston in June, just before the AAPG. Um, I'm gonna do my best to be there if anyone else decides to attend and wants to say hi, but I would definitely encourage you if you're gonna be around Houston right before the AAPG to check it out. 
Um, and yeah, they might seem intimidating, but there's not a lot of them out there. Like I said, they're very friendly to newcomers. But there's also a lot of tutorials out there. If you want to go more traditional route in order to get started with programming and get started with Python, um, one text that I'm a big fan of is the automate the boring stuff with Python. It's not geoscience specific, um, it's pretty generic, but it's freely available on their website or you can buy the book or you can check out a course. Um, and it's a very good way to get into programming and get those foundations before you start doing, say, more scientific or geoscientific stuff. Um, if your plan is to build the next advanced machine learning based seismic interpretation package from scratch, it's probably gonna be a bit of a long road ahead. Um, instead, my suggestion is to just try extracting some data from a text file or doing some simple, maybe even petrophysical calculations, or even just plotting some points on a map. It's gonna be more accessible and it's gonna give you better foundations for getting into programming, especially with Python. Okay, so what are some of the resources I used? Um, Udemy is a pretty good website that has a lot of courses. You can try an online tutorial there. Uh, last time I checked this morning, I'm gonna post a link right now. There was a free course on there. Uh, I didn't take it myself, but from what I've heard, it's pretty good. The automate the boring stuff one, also very good. But more related to geoscience specifically, uh, there's a community called the Software Underground, and they have a Slack chat. I'll post a link in here as well for that. Um, Slack is just a chat app for those that don't know, kind of like Skype or Microsoft Teams or Discord, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a community where people discuss subsurface. Python's a big part of it, but they also discuss other coding languages, discuss hackathons. Um, I would encourage people to check it out if they're curious in what the geoscience open source software community is like. Um, there's a group, I think it's run by a company called Agile Geoscience that basically supports it, but yeah, definitely encourage you to check it out. A um, Couple other resources that are gonna be very useful for learning how to code. Google might seem obvious, but if you run into a problem when you're starting coding, you can just basically type it into Google and chances are if you're starting, someone's run into the same problem as you already and they'll have a great answer. Uh, Stack Overflow and GitHub are two other websites that you'll probably come across once you're starting. It, uh, Stack Overflow is a forum for programming, so people will ask questions on there and hopefully answer them as well. And then GitHub is just another website that has, that people store their code on. Um, it's a repository, it hosts software development for people, who, some people, and people share their code freely on there. So a lot of the libraries I've talked about that are specific to geoscience are hosted on GitHub, and so you can go check it out. They'll have README documents, and you can learn more about them there. Um, so what have I done in Python? Maybe you're curious to see some examples. Um, so I've got a few couple scripts that I've built. They're nothing super complicated, um, I guess depending on how you look at it, but a good place that I found to start was more on the data management side. Um, for example, if you're looking for LAS files or SegWi files on your network, you can use Windows to search for those things or whatever your operating system is. And yeah, you can find the files, but what if you want to look through all of the files on your corporate network and see some information that's in them? Say you wanna look through all your LAS files and return some of the header info. What if you wanna look through your SegWi files, get some of the header info from those for a QC perspective, data management, or even in terms of your SegWi, what if you want to compare it, compare your different projects that are in your commercial software and see what SegWi might be duplicated between different projects and just do some data management? Like I said, not super complicated, I guess, conceptually, but these are the sort of things that I've done, found in geoscience that end up saving a lot of time and end up being pretty useful to me at least. Another thing I've done, uh, just dealing with culture data to, for example, look for closed polygons and dis determine the area of some of those closed polygons. So I'll just pop out of here, out of the presentation for a second, into 
something called a Jupyter Notebook. So the, what I'm showing here is a, it's called the Jupyter Notebook. It's something in Python that you can use to display your code and present it kind of in a web browser. Um, so for example, what if I want to quickly show some curves from an LAS file? Um, using a library called Welly that I mentioned before, I can look up an LAS file, right? Only, there's only five lines of code basically, and I can get an image that returns my curves with some legends kind of built in. It's reading the curve names, plotting them out, giving me some units at the bottom. And just to show you as an example in Python, this sort of thing can be really quickly and easily done. It doesn't need to be um, production ready. This is basically just for my own view, my own QC. What if I want to search for LAS files? So there's a lot of big wall of text here. I understand if you're watching a presentation, you might not want to look, read too much into it, but if you're interested after, I can always share some of this code with you. Um, but basically, if I want to look for LAS files and return all of the unique L uh, UWIs within those LAS files, I can build a function. I can show some of that information in a table using uh, that pandas library I mentioned. So I get a bit of a spreadsheet written here. And then I can export it as a CSV file. So right away, doing a little bit here in Python, I can export that as a CSV file and do with it, dump it into Excel or import it into software to keep track of it, or I could even keep programming on it if I want. Um, another challenge that one of our clients ran into actually that I threw a script together for was uh, what if I have a gridded surface and I want to isolate all of the closed contours that are greater than a given area. Um, I want to see potentially where pools of a certain size exist within a region, specifically with closed contours. If I wanted to manually go through this, I could go into my commercial package and potentially measure each of the contours. And I might have to do it one at a time. Maybe there's some stuff to automate that process a little bit, but I had a very specific workflow. So using some code and connecting it into my sizeware project in this case, I can do this process really quickly, and I can also replicate it if I want to do it again in the future. I can do it. The program takes just a couple seconds to run versus the manual work that would take to click the polygons or check it out. So um, here's an example. I just defined an area uh, function that allows me to check an area. And there's a couple more lines just for connecting to my project. I can pick a given threshold in terms of an area, and then I use a loop or a couple loops with some logic statements to go through and I've got my contour and then I can isolate based on an area of 200 square feet, 2,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet, or 40,000 square feet. And this is all done in code and it interacts with my Sizeware project. So it just allows me to go back and forth. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be interacting with your commercial software, but I just want to show an example of something that could be done. Uh, and then finally, another thing I wrote was just to take a look for my SegY files on my disk and see what's in my projects. Uh, I define a couple functions that help me search through, um, say, my network directory. I could look through my entire corporate network if I wanted to. Um, IT might not be super happy about that, but gives you an idea of the potential. But basically I can go through and using that pandas library once again, I can return a table of some of the paths of my segwi files. And I can also see which projects my segwi files are duplicated in. And this is all just code I've written. So it, is endlessly customizable. If there's tweaks you want to do or changes you want to make, that's totally open to you because when you're writing your own code, you're not restricted whatsoever in terms of what you want to accomplish. If I guess if you dream big enough. So yeah, those are three quick examples. Um, 
what do you do now? So I guess, what is the what are the options to go through and how can you learn how to use Python if you want to? Uh, there's a lot of courses out there that teach you how to use Python. There's a lot of free generic ones. If you just wanna learn the foundations of Python, I posted a link a little bit earlier for that Udemy course. Um, yeah, but there's, like I said, no shortage of them. I'm partial to that automate the boring stuff one, but yeah, you could you could find one. But there's also uh, a number of geoscience specific courses that you can take. Uh, there's two groups that I know of that run them. Um, Agile Scientific is one that does one pretty specifically for geophysics, geology. They get into machine learning as well. Enthought's another company out of Houston. For those of you in Houston or in the area, it might be a little bit more useful. Um, you can check those out. They offer quite a few scientific Python courses as well. Uh, another fun way to get started and learn, attend a hackathon. Like I said, they can be pretty fun and pretty motivational in terms of uh, just seeing what you might be capable of, even though you might not know that much about coding. Starting small is also a really good idea. Don't, I mean, if you're ambitious, go for it. But uh, I would suggest going for like data management scripts. If you saw, I didn't write a million lines of code to do those three things that I was showing off a little bit earlier. And I think they can be pretty useful and time saving. Um, and then another option is you can always bring someone into your company, depending on what your company's perspective is on that. But um, those two links I posted, I think those companies will also fly out to you and teach a bunch of people in-house if, if you're curious, if you wanna learn more about Python and coding and relating it to geoscience and your work. Um, but yeah, there's probably a lot more details uh, that Wraps it up for me though, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to email rsvp at sizeware.com. Thank you.